Thanks, Daphne. Welcome to Senate Education. It's Friday, February 25th, uh, 1.20. Our work for today is going to be to vote on uh, S219 uh, and then have a walkthrough of S197. And that should conclude our work prior to uh, town meeting week. So with that, uh, I would anticipate that we'll probably go, I'm thinking until about 2, 2.15, something like that. Um, so with that, uh, Mr. Demaray, you uh, provided us with a new draft uh, committee, just so you know the process at this point with S219 probably won't be on the floor for a while. Uh, it will go down to appropriations. Uh, fiscal notes been requested by me for uh, that they will review. Um, we'll continue to engage in the work. So I'm anticipating that they may vote it out uh, two weeks from today, something like that. So uh, we still have a little ways to go. Mr. Demaray, anything you want to uh, mention to us? Uh just you, you don't actually have a new draft. You have the same draft as right, yesterday, right. just Thanks. without the highlights. Yep. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. Yep. So hopefully everyone has had an opportunity just to review it. We'll take another minute. If anyone hasn't, please just read through it. And again, this is um, an act relating to ensuring compliance with the US and Vermont constitutions and the use of public funds for tuition and in the dual enrollment program. Any questions or comments at this point for Ledge Council? Seeing none, I would uh, welcome a motion for the strike all amendment uh, to uh, in support of S219, 219. So moved. So moved by Senator Hooker. Committee questions or discussion? Draft 5.5. Thank you, draft 5.5. Thank you very much, Senator Lyons, for that. Appreciate that. Uh, First off, it's not, not a committee amendment. It's, it's a committee bill. Committee bill. Um, thank you. Uh, draft 5.5 of S219. Thank you. Moved by Senator Hooker. Thanks, everybody. Seeing no questions or comments, Senator Persley, if you would call the roll. Will do. S219, draft 5.5. Senator Chittenden. Yes. Senator Hooker. Yes. Senator Lyons. Yes. Senator Perchlick votes yes. Senator Terenzini. Yes. Senator Campion, the chair. Yes. So 600. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate everybody's work on this. I know it's been a haul. Uh, special thanks to you, uh, Mr. Demaray. Um, just incredible work. Uh, really, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And we know you, you're going to finance, so feel free to drop off when you need to. So committee, we're just waiting for um, uh, Katie McClinn, who's going to just take us through S197. And I'm wondering, Senator Lyons, um, you've been working in your morning committee on this. I'm wondering if you could just give us an overview, a little bit of background and what committee members, uh, the connection to this committee, et cetera. Uh, yep, you are muted. How did you know I asked that question? Which question? Am I muted? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> that is really clever. <laughs> okay, so yes, thank you. Thank you, um, Senator Campion. Um, our committee, obviously, we're all aware of the significant mental health and anxiety issues that have been placed on children during the pandemic. And what's happened, as we've heard both in our committee and in this committee, is that kids have strong needs for some social, emotional, and mental health support. We've also heard that in our committee, as well as this committee, that those 
supports are not always readily available through the school process. In fact, our committee today heard some testimony from um, mental health counselors uh, on the uh, mental health counseling that's going on through our designated agencies with master's prepared mental health counselors, that kids are getting some one-on-one -on -one support. They are getting some group therapy, but beyond that, there are gaps in the system. And so we took testimony on from the after school program. And we heard that the after school program does provide some support services for kids, but continue to find gaps geographically and then within the various tiers of needed support. So it's a complex issue. And we know that there are currently, there's currently a system in place for mental health counseling to be available to schools but it's our understanding that it that is incomplete and it's incomplete in a couple of ways that um, we can talk about. Uh, one is the level of service provided, the number of folks available to provide the service directly in schools, and then the summer gaps and the out of school gaps. So I, I, I see that Katie's here and I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on this, but just one further comment I've been working with our joint fiscal office. Uh, it was presented to me that, and uh, the committee that ESSER funds may be uh, accessible for this kind of mental health counseling, after school counseling, and joint fiscal has worked with AOE. This is the, this is the heavy lift part, I think, of the bill, the heavy lift in identifying the funds available to expand support services for kids geographically across the state. And then uh, the, the tiered approach that uh, Senator Hooker, Senator Terenzini and I have been hearing about in committee. So our committee will be, uh, we will be changing the language that you see in the bill based on work that, we, that uh, we're doing with Department of Mental Health and others. But it, I think the bill is a good, it's a great first start and I'll let Katie uh, correct now all the egregious things I've said and um, go through the bill. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Senator Lyons. Uh, and it's great to have you with us this afternoon. Ms. McLean, we usually don't have the pleasure of having you in, in Senate education. So thanks for being with us. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's nice to see everyone. And I didn't realize so many members of my morning committee were serving on this committee. So that's fun to see as well. Um, you, so would you like me to you, share? Yeah, you know, Senator Perslick, I suspect. And mm -hmm. you know, Senator Ch uh, Chittenden? Have you no, I don't think we've okay. worked together before. Hello. Good to see you. Great. Okay, please. The floor is yours. Would you like me to share my screen or do you prefer? We actually have a S197 I have not checked if Daphne has. It um, is posted. Thank you very much. Then let's take a look at it. We will uh, work from our iPads, et cetera. Okay. Thank and you. And I'll just pull it up for myself. Thank you. Yep. So this is S197. This is a bill that Senate Health and Welfare has been looking at a bit. Um, and as Senator Lyons teed up, this has to do with the linkage between um, mental health and wellness services and students, both students in school and particularly after school programming. So the first section is an inventory of mental health crisis response program. So this section charges the Department of Mental Health in consultation with AOE, AHS, and the Department of Public Service to inventory all mental health crisis response programs that utilize state funds. And that this would um, come back um, to the Committee on Health and Welfare and Healthcare upstairs um, by January 15th of 2023. In section two, this is probably the section, the next two sections are probably most relevant to this committee. Um, this creates a um, grant program to allow for the use of um, ESSER funded grants through DMH um, to support mental health and wellness services and programming and after school 
programs. So in fiscal year 2023, 250,000 is appropriated from ESSER funds to DMH to establish and administer a two-year program in consultation with AOE that provides grants to both school-based and community-based after-school programs to support mental health and wellness needs of students, families, and staff. The grants are to be available to programs operating in a variety of settings outside the school day and over the summer, including before and after school care, in-service days, and school vacation weeks. In subsection D, the department um, shall adopt policies, procedures, and guidelines for the implementation of this program. And then in subsection C, um, we have language that the department is to issue the grants to after-school programs in geographically diverse regions of the state on a first come first serve basis until funds are depleted when an applicant meets the following criteria. The, the applicant program meets the following criteria. First, uh, uses evidence-based strategies to address students' social, emotional, and mental health and wellness needs. Second, works in close partnership with classroom teachers and school guidance counselors to coordinate supports communication and strategies. Third, uses specially trained staff to provide one-on-one -on -one and small group supports and resilience sessions for children and youth, including addressing specific needs such as suicide prevention, social, social isolation, anxiety, and substance use. Fourth, provides participating families with assistance in navigating behavioral health resources and their communities in their communities. Five, provides opportunities for children and youth to participate in activities that heal and prevent social isolation, such as outdoor activities, art therapy, recreation, and time in nature. Six, collects data to demonstrate the effectiveness of the mental health and wellness supports and interventions utilized by the program. Seven, consults with local pediatricians to provide referrals for supports. Eight, connects to and aligns with statewide initiatives, including Building Flourishing Communities, Youth Fr Thrive, and the Vermont Youth Project. And nine, provides staff training on youth mental health first aid and other evidence-based techniques and approaches to crisis prevention and intervention, such as trauma responsive practices, adolescent brain development, and how to build a culture of connection. So those are the criteria for selecting um, the grant recipients. And then in subsection D, we have a report back uh, that by January 15th of 2025, the department is to submit a report um, to the committees of jurisdiction summarizing the after-school programs to which grants were awarded. And then section three, as you know, um, there is the Vermont Interagency After School Youth Task Force. It was established by executive order. And this language requires that task force to submit to the committees of jurisdiction copies of the bi-monthly prog progress reports it's already doing and um, sending to the governor on achieving expanded universal after school and summer programming. And this last sentence adds that the task force is to also provide advice and recommendations to the General Assembly upon request. And then it has an effective date of July 1 of this year. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Senator Lyons, this is uh, work that you've worked uh, closely with Holly Morehouse on, correct? Um, you're muted, Senator. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's accurate. And uh, I should probably uh, bring you, Kate, Katie was not able to be in committee today. Um, and we did have, we do have comments from the Department of Mental Health. Um, I have met with them recently and also with members of our, our DAs like the Howard Center and the Northwest um, Counseling Center. And they, the, I think what we're hearing is uh, from both those areas is that the uh, one that it, maybe we need to flip it and say the agency of education in consultation with the Department of Mental Health, there's concerns that the ESSER funds, as I said before, wouldn't be, um, we wouldn't be able to have those ESSER funds go through DMH. So that's one thing we'll have to think about um, 
The other one is how to make more flexible the criteria. The criteria are very strict and rigid. And we heard today from the designated agencies that they're already doing a lot of these things. The issue is that not every part of the state has all of these things available uh, during school and then also in the out of school environment. So the after school program. So all I'll say is after school is very supportive of this. There is some concern on the part of the um, mental health counselors in our communities that this will preempt their work in some way. So they're interested in having, uh, I, I, Katie's gonna have to help with this one, but how to put, the, put it into the current system so that the current system of care for kids, you know, having embedded mental health counselors in schools and having uh, these funds available for those folks. I, I don't think they're, they're, I don't think they're, eliminated in the bill, but it is so much focused here on after school, we might have to expand it a little bit. But I, you know, overall, um, beyond that, I think we all understand the need for additional resources to help kids. And so if the ESSER funds can be made available, that is one very important resource. Thank you for this. And I, I'll go. I'll look to Josh and and. Yeah, Cheryl. I was just going to see if either of yeah. them want to uh, add anything, and then I'd like to turn to Senator Perslick, also who's been involved with after school work. Uh, S Senator Hooker, did you yes, had your I'm, hand up. I'd like to hear from Senator Perslick and where the after school task force is at this point. But um, I think for me the uh, the stumbling block is how the funding is going to be. Okay. distributed where it's going to come from if ESSER funds are not able to be used by mental health then I guess we we really have to go through the education uh, the agency of education is that would that be correct and it seems that I know that the counselors this morning said the best thing or one of the best things we could do would be to put more money into the the DAs um, how do we do that uh, if the funds can't be applied to, uh, you know, through mental health. So, I don't know if that makes Can sense. I ask Katie yeah. a question about that? Yes, absolutely. That? Lines, so, sure. so the way the DAs get the money now is through a grants process for this work? Do you know? I, I believe so, but I, yeah. I did want to comment um, and I wish that JFO would be here because they could speak to this much more articulately than I could. Um, but there was an, an email um, from Sarah Clark that um, I know you received earlier today, but it talked about how um, potentially ESSER funds could flow from AOE to DMH via an MOU. And that was sort of a standard practice that would be allowed. Um, and that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge on that. So I would recommend that you would hear more from JFO if you're interested in that. Yeah, I did share that memo with um, Senator Campion. But so yeah, it, and the question of the MOU is something the AOE is going to have to um, sort of deal with. But, okay, yeah. Senator Terenzini. Thanks, Senator Campion. Uh, I was thinking of the same, sort of the same direction of Senator Hooker with some of these funding questions and so on. So I have nothing else to add, but I appreciate Senator Hooker beating me to the punch. <laughs> All right. Senator Perslick. Well, one thing I wanted to clarify that the task force mentioned in here is the governor's task force and not the legislative created task force. The governor, after our legislative task force issued our report, my understanding, I haven't looked at the executive order, but my understanding is the governor created his own task force with, you know, after school Vermont and Department of Health and the Agency of Administration and, and Agency of Education. I don't know who else is on that, um, but we could maybe hear about who, who exactly is heading that up. I don't know if the governor's office, if it's- We, we have that executive order in our committee and we can, you know, that can be shared. 
yeah. you're right. It is. It, it, the, the question is, it's an executive order um, and we're in an election year and the funds that we're talking about would be for the next two years. So, you know, it does get all mixed up, but I think it's important for I, I personally feel it's important for the legislature to weigh in on, on this going forward. And I, people can disagree with me on that. Yeah, I guess that's a, an open question. I haven't thought about it is whether, because that task force could be disappeared by the governor if they wanted to, since it's created by the governor and would could be disbanded or changed around. But I, I think from what I've heard that they're, it's a great task force and they're doing- Oh, uh, they're doing awesome work. <laughs> Yes. So it seems like a, a logical task force to use for this, this work. And I think it's a great bill and support it, support the effort. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate uh, also Senator Lyons, you working on this with Senators <clears throat> Terenzini and Hooker and the rest of your, your morning committee. Very much appreciate it. Um, so Senator Lyons, at this point, you know, we've, we've had a walkthrough. You and I perhaps can touch base during this coming week and, and work to find a little bit of a, a shared path forward. And we'll look to you for, you know, the lead on what you're going to need from us, et cetera. Um, how does that feel? That's good. I, I think it would be important maybe for us to zoom in with Katie and, and have a conversation and then I think that the big issue, as Senator Hooker has identified, is the funding piece and how we can, what monies might be available to do the work. I know in the memo, it indi the memo indicated that the Agency of Education is putting together a full plan for the use of ESSER funds. But I, I also think, um, again, we can support in some way um, through our recommendations, how they might be used. So that's a conversation. That that's your conversation, <laughs> Senator Hooker. I I just wanted to add that um, as much as we heard from counselors, the need for expansion of counselors in schools and and the like. This these grants would help all the kids and I think we can all agree that the pandemic has affected all of us and sometimes we don't even know how it's affected us and so programs that are suggested in the bill I think would apply to kids across the board and you know everybody would benefit from this not just the kids but the families um, yeah. and the staff so I, we we'd like to do everything for everybody but no, can't all the time. Yeah. You know, again, I really appreciate everybody in health and welfare working on this. We continue to hear of the <clears throat> mental health and social emotional health issues, not only that young Vermonters are, are dealing with under normal circumstances, but then, you know, with the pandemic, it has certainly exacerbated things. And we heard early on, you know, the importance of of working on this in order to get students to the point where they can, you know, um, benefit from from the rest of, I'd say, their educational experiences. So thank you, Senator Lyons and others. Well, the committee has been pondering on this one. It hasn't been an easy uh, process. It's not easy. Right. And right. Katie's really been critical. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks, Ms. McLenn. Uh, so I think we'll, uh, so at this point, we will, Senator Lyons, you and I and others can meet during the week, uh, work on a path forward. Um, and I'd say the other things related to, uh, well, I think, do you want to, are we good there before we move on? Okay. Ms. McClin, thanks for joining us. Thanks for the walkthrough. Any other questions for Ms. McClin before we, uh, we say goodbye? Okay. Thanks, Katie. Great to see you. So committee, uh, when we return, um, we will work, pick up S-162, uh, as well as a number of things related to the budget where we hope, I hope to do some work on uh, things like the Holocaust bill 
and a couple of other outstanding priorities after school work, et cetera. I plan to talk to Senator Baruth, who's been our liaison between this committee and approps uh, during uh, town meeting week. And certainly if anybody has anything else that they uh, want to move before crossover, which is two weeks from today, uh, please just uh, be in touch and we'll do our very best to get it done. Knowing that we also have a couple of things coming our way uh, that we can always, uh, could be a vehicle for other bills as well as a house bill that we have on our wall from last year that we can use as well. So any anything else from anybody at this point? Senator Perchley. Do we know of any house bills in particular that are like on their on their way over? I so to, yeah, thanks for the question. So today we received a bill on uh, the state colleges. Um, I don't know the details of it, but they're also sending, um, so they're sending that uh, review, some work on chapter 11 that they did, some rewrites. Uh, and I'm not sure what else is coming our way. I think those are the two things that the chair has mentioned to me thus far. What's chapter 11? Um, <laughs> not the bankruptcy law. I know, that's, that's what I always think about, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'll have to get back to you on that, <laughs> okay. um, but they have been working on it. And even though it's it, the chapter itself, oh, and I think we might also anticipate something on 173, but, um, so those, I think those are the things that have, they, they've been working on. There's also talk of a, yeah, I think those are, those are the things that I've heard from, from representative Webb. I, sorry, I can't, I don't have any additional details. Uh, yeah. And uh, the Washington County senators had a public forum the other night on zoom and we had several folks asking about the state colleges uh, board bill, Cheryl Hooker's bill. Oh, Senator, Senator Hooker's bill. Sure. So Senator I, Hooker. um, I couldn't remember where we were on that or Senator Hooker, do you want to uh, give an update on that? Uh, I, I think we're still in some conversation. I spoke with the chair about uh, maybe looking at the bill to see what we might be able to put forward. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about it. Actually, I'm meeting with Tom Brochure this afternoon uh, from UVM. Um, I've been okay. in contact with people from Castleton uh, so, you know, if there's something that we can do on shared governance uh, this year, that would be good. Um, I'm not sure, you know, that the bill as it stands would be something that we would recommend. But, and you've talked a little bit, I think, also with the pro tem's office, right? On this. I did yeah, talk great. with the pro tem, and Thank you know, you. she talked about coming up with some kind of agreement. Okay. So uh, I'm in Rutland on Monday. Uh, and so uh, with Senator Hooker, and maybe I don't know if Senator Terenzini is going to be back in time, but uh, not too sure. Uh, and so uh, Senator Hooker, maybe you and I can pick up that conversation a little bit in person. Yeah, that'll be great. Thanks, Senator Birchlick. Yeah. Have a safe trip. Yeah, have a safe drive. It's mm -hmm. not. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be slow. As long as it's highway, you should be okay. Yeah. Anything else? Thanks for a great uh, several weeks. Really appreciate it, everybody. Uh, Senator oh, Lyons, yes. Just We probably should remind ourselves that we won't be on the floor the first two days. That's right. Thank coming you. Coming back. And we will have some weird schedule the second two days that we're back on the floor anyway. Thank you. And yeah. related to that, uh, I'll poll folks during the week as to whether or not they're interested in coming in or not. I'm fine with a hybrid. I'm fine with people uh, staying, working, continuing to do committee work from home for the, I think the plan is would be those first two days. Uh, I, I want everybody to do whatever is most comfortable for them. Senator Perchlick. I just wondered, we, we talked a little bit this in the morning com committee, but I was unsure how it works. If the floor time is takes up a big chunk of the day on, on Thursdays and Fridays, will 
the afternoon committees will still be meeting or it just kind of depends on how long the floor is or? I'm told we'll still meet. Um, one day will be longer than others, but one of the reasons I'd hoped to get as much done this week was I'm just not 100% sure how much time we'll have. And I don't like that last minute rush for seven o'clock nights. So hopefully we're okay. Um, and uh, I know the pro tem did say, or the whoever was talking about the rules and Cheryl, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong that there was, there was going to be an attempt to balance morning and afternoon committees and also to balance the time so that we, we don't lose a significant amount of time those two days. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I'm, we've got a lot and to do. I, I suppose, depending on what's come out of committees by the end of today, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how much there will be to do on Tuesday, especially, or on, on Thursday, I'm sorry. On, on Thursday, the floor, yeah. Um, yeah. On the calendar and stuff. And, and the anticipation was that it would be a short um, floor session. So there would be time, you know, for the committees and again, balancing the, the start time for the floor session so that the morning committees um, aren't hit both days. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, Chinden has like a 30 minute speech on our bill that he's presenting on Thursday. Wouldn't it be on Thursday that he'd be doing? Two hours right now, but I'm going to try to trim it down. <laughs> <laughs> Can you send us a written copy, please? <laughs> yeah, that one needs to be knocked out of the park to to sort of smooth the way for the other two. Um, so if, if I get in trouble, I will plan on deferring. I'll say I'm now going to pass this over to the eloquent senator from Chittenden. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Yeah. Oh, and uh, oh, before we go, uh, just a quick thanks. Daphne, thanks so much. You have just done incredible work. Are you there? Uh, you know, we're, we're now just at town meeting. Uh, we still have a ways to go, but gosh, we're so glad you're with us and so grateful for everything you've done. So just appreciate that. Thank you so much, Chair Campion.